So I'm Saul Perlmutter, and I'm a professor of physics at the University of California at Berkeley and also a senior scientist at Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. The measurement that we wanted to make, the measurement that we had set out to make, was a measurement of the history of the expansion of the universe um, by seeing these very, very distant stars, these exploding stars. The furthest one was so far away that the light was traveling to us for some 10 billion years. And it's fun to think about what was going on while that light was traveling to us. So imagine this one supernova exploding and this bit of light starts to travel to you across this expanding universe. Here, where we live today, um, there was just a, a scattering of, of, of dust um, that was starting to coalesce um, into perhaps a disk. And while that light traveled to us, that disk formed eventually into a, a swirling mass where a, a star formed in the middle, and that became our sun. And some of the outer uh, parts turned into planets. And little by little, one of those planets uh, you know, went through uh, various different changes and you know, became hotter and colder. And meanwhile, that photon is still struggling to make its way across the universe to, to find us. And eventually, on that planet, oceans formed. And in those oceans, some proto-life started to appear. And by now, our uh, lonely photon that's still making its way across the universe has shifted a little bit from blue towards a slightly redder color. And that proto-life evolved into more complex life with more complex multicellular organisms that swam around these oceans and eventually into um, life that crawled out onto the surface, evolved into different species, eventually mammals, eventually us. And so while this is happening, the photon is still traveling to us. We started to understand this world and, and uh, learned eventually how to farm and eventually how to make tools and, and start to explore scientifically, well, what is this world around us? We learned some technology so we could start building things. Eventually we got to the point that we could build this the largest telescope we ever made and point it just over to that part of the sky where that same photon that's been traveling for all this 10 billion years would fall into the telescope and we would catch it. And that's how we've learned about this universe that was all going on while we didn't even exist yet. The beautiful baobab tree, or tree of life, is an African icon. The baobab fruit contains four times the potassium of banana, three times the vitamin C of an orange, and twice the calcium of spinach. But the baobab is an orphan. Science has paid little attention to this tree, until now. The African Orphan Crops Consortium is harnessing the power of genetics for orphan crops. The baobab tree is the first of 101 plants to have its genome sequenced, assembled, and annotated. And the information will be made available to all unrestricted. Where millions of people are malnourished, this genetic data will help farmers provide the food they need. The genomes will guide African plant breeders so they can create crops that are higher yielding, water and nutrient use efficient, resilient to climate change, and full of nutrition triggering a huge leap forward for the diversity and sustainability of the continent's agriculture.